Madam President, the Transportation Enhancements Program uh, that the McCain Amendment would essentially uh, cripple was established in 1991 in a bipartisan transportation bill signed by President George H.W. Bush, and it has been continued in subsequent bipartisan transportation bills, which passed in 98 and 05. And this program benefits all Americans by making significant investments in safety, helping to reduce congestion, expanding transportation choices, and it strengthens local economy, provides jobs, protects the environment, and this amendment eliminates seven of the activities eligible under the Transportation Enhancements Program, and it prevents any funds from being spent on those activities. Now here's the thing about uh, the TE program, Transportation Enhancements Program. There are things in it we need to reform. And Senator Inhofe and I, along with Senator Vitter and Baucus, are working very hard, and we have a bill, a bipartisan bill that Madam President, you're a proud member of our committee. We're going to mark up that bill uh, very soon. So yes, it needs reform. But this took a meat ax to a program that is a very important program, and it would have far-reaching and unintended consequences. By, pro by prohibiting any funds to be used on these activities that Senator McCain singled out, this amendment actually eliminates the flexibility of our states and prevents them from spending funds on activities which are necessary to construct and maintain our highway system. So even setting aside the loss of jobs that would incur as a result of the McCain amendment, uh, let me tell you the un other unintended consequences. But maybe Senator McCain intended that it, there'd be fewer jobs. But I'm assuming uh, he didn't intend, for example, uh, this kind of an, a situation. In the case of historic bridges, a bridge could be deficient. But under this amendment, we couldn't fund a rehabilitation project because the bridge is historic. Because he says you can't spend any money on historic sites, a regular uh, fix to a bridge that happens to be historic would not take place. Now, I just happened to finish a book that, Madam President, I strongly recommend, uh, The Great Bridge, The Building of the Brooklyn Bridge. What a story David McCullough tells. And that bridge was built in the 1800s. It's historic. Under the McCain Amendment, they could no longer get funds. That's the unintended consequence, because it's historic. So even though it is probably one of the heaviest travel bridges, and you could attest to that, in our nation, imagine uh, uh, this amendment, which would not allow bridges such as this to get funded. It is a poorly drafted amendment. I don't know, maybe this was intended. I can't imagine it was intended, but this is the truth. This is what would happen. You, you also have in this amendment a prohibition on the use of funds for landscaping, which is necessary to complete any federal aid highway project in order to prevent erosion along a highway. So, you know, I happen to be a person that believes when you do a project, it ought to look good. It ought to make people feel good. And landscaping is important, and it creates jobs, and it cleans the air, okay? But setting all of that aside, it's a safety question because a lot of times those plants will hold the soil in place and stop erosion when we have strong and heavy rains. Now yesterday, our friend from Alaska, Senator Begich, mentioned the Seward Highway outside of Anchorage and how scenic overlooks were added to provide a safe place for tourists to pull over. Under the McCain Amendment, as I understand it, you couldn't spend money on scenic outlooks. But let me tell you, in the case of this particular scenic outlook, it was necessary for safety because people were so inspired before the scenic outlook, they just pull over in a dangerous way, have no place to go, and it was not good for safety. Now, I want to talk about the Transportation Enhancements Program in Senator McCain's state of Arizona. 
Uh, the demand is so strong from Arizona for these funds that Arizona submitted three times what they were actually able to get under the transportation enhancement programs. For example, in 06, 72 applications requested $31 million in local projects, in local project TE funding, but only 11 million was awarded to 24 projects. In Safford, Arizona, TE funds are being used to, Im used to improve five intersections and the surrounding streetscapes along Main Street to provide safer means of travel for pedestrians. According to the city of Safford, in Arizona, this project provides a viable transportation component dedicated to pedestrian safety within the increased vehicle traffic on Main Street. This downtown project to improve safety, mobility, and commerce was supported by the town of Thatcher, the Safford Downtown Association, and the Graham County Chamber of Commerce. So again, we have a situation here where I believe this amendment has very adverse consequences to our local people, to our states. Right now, the way TE is in, the, in our bill, the old bill, it's really up to the states whether they want to do this. No one can force them to spend the money on this. They have the flexibility. So now, seven ways of using these funds would be taken away from the state. So let's not, let's be clear on it. This is a state decision how they spend this money. They don't have to take this money. They make the decision themselves. And this amendment would take away that ability. Now, there's also a prohibition on controlling uh, outdoor advertising in the McCain Amendment. So that means if a state wanted to remove outdoor advertising, they couldn't use any federal funds to do it, and they couldn't effectively control their advertising, which is required under current law. So again, they're supposed to control outdoor advertising, but the funds would not get to them to do that. And I think if you ask the average person, they want their local people to have control over these things. And so we need to defeat the McCain Amendment or table the McCain Amendment. My friend from Arizona also is telling you that 10% of surface transportation funding goes to transportation enhancement. That is not correct. The Transportation Enhancement Program represents a tiny fraction of the Federal Highway Program, about 2%, not 10%, as my colleague John McCain said. Furthermore, the seven activities prohibited by the amendment have represented less than 1% of the entire Federal Highway Program. This amendment is making a dramatic and a sweeping policy change in what should otherwise be a clean appropriations bill. It represents an issue that we've been discussing at the EPW committee for quite some time in the context of a multi-year surface transportation reauthorization bill, which, as I said at the outset, is the proper vehicle for such a policy change. I thought we had decided as a United States Senate, Republicans and Democrats, that we shouldn't legislate on these bills. You know, Senator McCain doesn't like seven things in the Transportation Enhancement Program. Maybe I don't like two things, or Senator uh, Gillibrand may not like four things. Well, it's not up to one colleague to stand here and decide without any hearings or any discussion, you know, what they don't like in a particular bill. I just, I, I, I don't think that's the way we should legislate, especially since the TE program is run by the states. We make the funds available. They decide whether they want the funds for those activities. They don't have to do it. They don't have to take the funds. They don't have to do any of the eligible uh, projects. So it really, at the moment, has a lot of flexibility built in. And as we reform in the next bill, we'll look at some of the areas where we think we can uh, make this a better program. And believe me when I tell you that Senator Inhofe and I have been working very closely on this along with Senator Vitter and Baucus, so we think we're gonna have a very good reform TE program. This is not the place 
to, uh, to change a program that our states uh, really like. They like it because it's flexible. They like it because it has a number of ways they can use the funding. So we're going to have a bill. It's called MAP 21. stands for Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century. It's going to have a lot of reforms in it. It's going to consolidate a lot of programs. It's going to be, I think, a bill that most of us can really embrace and be happy with. And it's going to have a reform TE program. And that's the way to do this. There will be significant reforms. But it isn't right, in my view, and we'll see how the vote goes, to, for one senator to say, I don't like seven things that are in this uh, potpourri of things that you can use TE for. So I'm saying you can't do it. You can't use the funds. It's just, it's just not right. And I pointed out how this is worded in such a fashion that bridges like the Brooklyn Bridge and other historic bridges uh, could lose all their funding as a result of the way this is drafted. So let's turn away from this McCain amendment. Um, you know, uh, we know what works around here. And what works around here is bipartisan uh, cooperation, coordination. I see the senator from Texas, Senator Hutchison here. She works so closely with Senator Rockefeller. And I'll tell you what that means. It means that we have wonderful progress in the Commerce Committee, which we would never have. Senator Inhofe and I work very closely in, in EPW. And everyone kind of smiles about it because they know on the environment side we don't work closely. That's true. That we know that. He thinks global warming is the biggest hoax ever perpetrated on the American people. I think it's happening. It's real. So we know we don't see eye to eye on that. And we've decided that that's just a fact. So we don't engage in long arguments about it. We just pursue our agendas and we try to get the votes. But on infrastructure, you know, he's one of the most conservative, I'm one of the most liberal members here, and the fact is there's really no daylight between us on infrastructure because he believes that that's one of the major functions of our, of our government, and I do too, and it makes a lot of sense. Uh, I want to note the McCain Amendment is opposed by the National Association of Counties, the American Association of State Highway Transportation Officials, the National League of Cities, the National Trust for Historic Preservation, and the U.S. Travel Association. Ladies and gentlemen, America does not support this <laughs> amendment. This is a group of bipartisan organizations here. I mean, when you look at the National Association of Counties, I started as a county supervisor. You have Republicans, Democrats, independents, everything in between. Highway uh, transportation officials is completely nonpartisan. National League of Cities, we have Republicans and Democratic uh, mayors and councils. National Trust for Historic Preservation, again, a mixture of different views. And the U.S. Travel Association, I mean, I don't know how that breaks down, but it certainly is a bipartisan. Please, I hope people will will turn away from the McCain Amendment. It's really, it's not good for jobs. It's going to hurt jobs. It's going to have the unintended consequences of not allowing us to fix some of our most deficient uh, bridges. And it, um, it goes against, really, uh, the people we're supposed to represent here, the people out there on the ground, our county officials, our state highway transportation officials, our city officials, and those who work so hard to preserve the history of this greatest nation in the world. We can't turn our backs on historic preservation. Otherwise, we don't know, you know what our past was. It, it, it's, you know, I can't tell you how many mistakes were made in California where in the early years, we didn't realize what we were losing, what people would give back to get back some of those old courthouses that were torn down. Uh, I can't tell you, from the 1800s. And they could have been, you know, fixed up, but people didn't have the foresight. This uh, McCain Amendment would do real, real damage. And the U.S. Travel Association, 
you know, we're talking here about our small businesses. We're talking here about people who work in recreation, in, in uh, airline travel. Uh, they don't want to see this happen, this, this McCain Amendment. So I, I, I'm assuming Senator McCain will be here. We've reserved the last 10 minutes before noon. And at this point, I think I've said all I can say to persuade my colleagues, who I hope are listening in their offices, um, that uh, they should turn, turn away from the McCain Amendment. And with that, uh, I would yield the floor, and I would note the absence of a quorum. Clerk will call the roll. Mr. Cochran. 